Alright, so we're on the road again and hopefully I'll be able to film where we go. But I'm on a service call to work on a uh, 1650 I think, or 1600, one of the two. Wanting to replace the distributor with one of the new modern distributors and then he also wants electronic ignition in it which I'm not necessarily a fan of that but I am a fan of these new distributors so I got enough stuff with me that I think we can make her go and hopefully that's the only problem that this thing has I don't know I've never seen it I never talked to the guy other than to get directions another person uh, you know kind of turned me on to going to do this and so we're gonna see what's there and uh, hopefully we can have a successful time so we'll bring you back right after this Yeah, so we're getting into some territory that I haven't been in for years, so hopefully I'll be able to find this. This is not a road I typically take to go anywhere, but like I said, every four or five years there comes a reason, so today is that day. We got a good ways yet because we got to get into the next county and then so on and so forth so I'll bring you back whenever we get where we're going well I'd say this is the place so we'll see what we come up with kind of nice back here secluded peaceful yeah all right here we are at secret location L and we are doing some tractor work. I've worked on that tractor before and actually after I quit working at the place they totally overhauled it. And he's got several. He's got a 1550 and what have you. Fleet line over there in the other building. But we are working on the 1650 and we're going to change her over to the new style distributor because he's having a lot of issues trying to get it to run right. And he said he didn't care if I filmed as long as I didn't say his name. So, I don't blame him. I probably shouldn't have said my name either when I started. Okay, let's get this out of our way. Basically, this is going to be the exact same procedure as the 270 white of my cousins. Uh... So what we're going to do is pay attention to where it is pointing now and then make sure that we put our plug wires in the same orientation, you know what I'm saying. So right now, really, if you put this on and think about it, it is it's kind of pointed between uh, 5 and 2, right? Or 5 and 3, I should say. So, that'll just make it a little simpler later when we get that far. So, there, that's probably a better view for you. And what we're going to do is try to get this vacuum line out. That was one thing that I forgot to bring. I told him, and he's going to look and see if he's got one. I forgot an eighth inch pipe plug for the manifold. So... I need to just get a bunch of them and stick them in every toolbox so I always have some. And like I told him, I brought more stuff than what we'll probably need. He's put on this coil, so I'll probably leave it alone. It's supposed to be the kind we need. And we just got through looking at some equipment, and I might be acquiring some more treasures. So this project might be more of a trade which is fine because like I said before I like getting paid in all of her stuff so sure enough we are gonna fight every thread it looks like it's not that it's tight it's just that it's more than you can turn with the tips of your fingers 
and with the oil filter in there, you can't really get there. Now we're getting there. Okay, now one more time, just to be sure. We're gonna make sure we know that it is pointed in between three and five. But it's facing straight forward. And we will pull this out of there. And there we have it. Again, these are slotted, so you can only do one of two choices, basically. Right. So we want to do it in this neighborhood here. Let's see, we may not have that exact choice. Do we? There we go. Yeah. Okay, good. So who was your dealer back in the day that you got this? stuff from. I bought all of them off individuals. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. I didn't know who the, if co-op would have still been the dealer for this area or whether it was somebody in Columbus or Brown County. You no, know, I bought all of it off individuals, every one of them. Not nothing off the dealer. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What led you to this brand then? I mean, well, I ended up, when I bought the farm, a buddy of mine that uh, got away. He wanted to take uh, wood off of it, and I needed the money to make the paint. You know, I, I had cattle and that sort of thing, but this was extra money I needed to make paint. So I said, "Okay." And I said, "I'll save some of the wood." So he wanted. Now the battery's up there. Okay, that's fine. We're we're a ways away from that <laughs> yet, but we'll get. And uh, he got that, and he had that. He had that eighteen hundred battery. Okay. And he was dragging through. And we were talking about it. And he was about done. And he said, Yeah, tell me where he got it. He says, I probably need to sell it. I don't need it as much as more anymore. So I said, Okay. I said, What do you want for me? And uh, well, let me tell you a quick story first. Okay. And he, and he, and I knew he had it. And there was the farm behind uh, the farm, the farm, the place in front of me. You drove down the driveway. The place on the right. See, this all used to be a quarter section. A quarter okay. Quarter okay. And the guy that had bought this section down here, he had a fire one day in that field back there behind my. We were out there trying to get it out. And of course, at that time, the Van Buren Fire Department was way over on, oh, uh, Hamilton Creek Road. We were trying to clear it out, and finally. Bob said to him, he said, he just lived down just across the road. He said, go over and get that 1800. Put a box in it. He came over and put 1800 in the box. <laughs> he down, he drove over the edge of that fire and put it out. Wow. <laughs> and he flew over in about six gear. <laughs> the idea he didn't want to be hot enough to catch anything yeah. in the fire. Or it drip out, you know, so they all, they all leak like this. And he drove over that thing and put that fire out. And uh, maybe he was talking to later when he was doing the wood about selling it. And I said, How much you want to give me price? And I said, Well, why not just buy it? And so I bought it. That was my first. And then when I started hanging big time, I was in the CRP for a while. Okay. And when I started hanging big time, I told my wife, I said, You know, the problem is I spent so much time switching. Oh, back and forth between mm -hmm. implements, yeah. The first one I bought after that was the 1550, and it did not have a printed motor on it. I had a motor on it, and I, I, I bailed with the 1800. And then, of course, I still had to have the rake and eventually stuff to pick up, so I told, I told my wife, okay, I'm going to do another one. Then I bought, and you've heard of, uh, oh, you know, I know you knew. Who was the uh, Oliver guy out of Iowa? Oh, the uh, Larry Harson. Harson. Esterville. Esterville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I called him and I said, I see you online. It runs good. It's been repaired. He said, now it may, you know, it'll do your wine for a while. You may have to eventually put money in it. And I said, okay. He had a pretty good rep. So I said, okay, I'm going to send you a check. And I said, I'll get back to you how I'm going to pick it up. He said, okay. And Gary, the blind guy at that time, uh -huh. was not blind. 
And Rose Acres has a big farm out there. Yeah. Right near it. Oh, really? Near right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Gary said, and Gary was in charge of the trucking that day, and he said, well, I'll have the guy put it in front of the egg truck. Drive the nail fit in front of the egg trailer. He said, We'll just put it in front and load the eggs in behind it. There you go. <laughs> so I said, Okay. So Gary had a, now this is what's funny. You know, he got a driver going out there. He said, I want you to go and pick up this tractor. And he told him to pick it up. He said, Okay. He said, I got a couple things to do. So he went over to Larry's to pick it up. He said, I'll be back. He said, I got something I need to do first. And that's what he's going to do. He said, Well, I'm going to go fishing. And Larry said, I'll go with you. We go to this lake. He's over to school fishing. So here are these two guys. <laughs> they went fishing. Well, that worked out pretty good, though. And so the guy brought it back, and they sat down at Rose Acres down there at Portland, you know, um, where the bean plant is now. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah, I forget who owns that now. The Benson Hill, Hill or whatever. Hill or something. Yeah, but I think they've sold out again since, and it's something different now. Well, Gary told me it wouldn't last. He said, he said, there's no way anybody, it has to be associated with Rose Acres because nobody can make money on it. Yeah. And they said, anyway, that's where it was. That's where the office used to be for Rose Acres. And so it sat down there for a while until I could get Mickey to go after it. About, about a week, week and a half, two weeks. I called Gary, I said, well, I said, Mickey's going to come this Saturday. He said, well, it's a good thing. And I said, well, he said, everybody's brother will buy it. He said, you've got to get it out of here before you <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> And so I brought it home, and it became my rigging tractor. Okay. So I had an implement on every one. Well, are you recording? I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I like to hear the stories. Okay. I mean, so then I got you, you know, it was pretty much me and my wife and my daughter. And, and I thought, you know, I got to get, we were doing a lot. We were doing Gary's and doing mine. We were doing over here. And so I bought a accumulator and a, and a uh, graphic. And that tractor ran the gravel. I bought a brand loader. Off Dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because he sold that brand, yeah, for a and, while. Uh, and, uh, in fact, I, I, I bought a mower and a and baler off the of Dick. You know. But anyway, that's perfect. So I put the gravel on that, and of course the accumulator, and, I, and uh, all the behind the baler. And uh, for a long time, I few days square bales and pick them up with that. The problem is with that, Ross, is that that kind of setup is made for a pole barn. Yeah. I got a huge loss. That will hold 3,000 bales. That thing doesn't do any good for me. <laughs> so I used it for a while and still was putting them up, you know, by hand. I said, okay. So I sold it. I wish I hadn't. I sold it because I thought I'd experiment with round bales. And I know you're a farmer and I cannot stand round bales. <laughs> well, I I I don't like them to store, but I like them in, when it's snowing and you got to feed. You know, it's, see, now I think this reverse. Really? Well, yeah. if you got a way you can get them up to the barn close yeah. all the time, yeah. My, my my argument was this. Now wait a minute. It costs you know for my for my use. Mm -hmm. Two weeks in the summer hay in, and I'm done. And not for all my commercial, but for me. Yeah. Two weeks in the summer and hay and I'm done. If it's January and five degrees above zero. And the tractor won't start, mm -hmm. and the cattle's out of hay. You got to get cattle down. But if it's five degrees above zero, and I've got square bales, it doesn't make any difference. I can walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it. Uh, a lot of times, see, my I have a 1650 diesel for a loader tractor, and boy, I wish I would have put it on a gas tractor because by the time you finally get it warmed up, you're done with whatever you're doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I get that, but and that's why. I, and uh, and I didn't really care. You know, I fed most. I mean, I had cattle, but I fed mostly horses. And uh, you get a little problem with things with horses around. You don't have the cattle because the horses aren't ruined. And so, uh, so I, I sold. I, I didn't sell. Uh, I, after I sold my cube, I bought a round baler, and the round baler set for a long time. And I did go ten bales for somebody now and then. And now my grandson wants to round bale with it. Well, there you go. So we'll see what he does. <laughs> well, I, you can make. I mean. If you got extra to do, you could make money selling round bales because there's always somebody looking. Yeah. I mean, and it seems like what's strange about it, like when I buy bales to feed or for myself, I want them as big as I can get them. Why those people will pay you more for a four by four bale oh, yes. than they will for a bigger because they can put it in their pickup and just push right. it out, you know. That's right. So that's uh I always did really well with squares. 
And I thought, here's a confession. Yeah, it's easier to maneuver. Yeah, they want light square. They don't want a 50 pound, 55 pound square bale. They want a 40 pound square bale. And so, I always tell them they were lighter. Well, that just made me more money. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I know, but it's true. They they'll pay the same price yeah. for a small one as they would for a big one. So I, I talk, so you no, that's okay. Away. My plan here is, I want to hear it run first, and then we'll put that electronic ignition in it next. Because okay. I, I've had issues with those before. I'd I'd rather hear it run first, and then we'll okay. put that in and see if it. What did you say that green drill was? A twenty-six high wheel drill. This, this is the book for 26 and 28. Yep, that would be it then. I just gotta, when we get it going, then we'll, we'll gotta time it a little bit and then we'll put that electronic thing in since you, you like them. I mean, I'm not a fan of them, but whatever. The each is on me. The problem I had was for this thing, uh -huh. probably the Holly Carpenter, I couldn't find a rotor. Yeah, yeah, see, I couldn't find no, a that, it's that distributor. Those are hard to find. The parts are getting expensive. And uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, and if you want to, if you want to run with it like this for a while and wait to put that in, that's fine too. I mean, or I'll put it in today. It doesn't matter to me, but uh, I, I, you don't like them what? Because it seems like they mess up eventually and then you don't end up you don't really know what's going on. I've had them mess up where, see, they're not forgiving. Like if you'd, if you'd run out of gas and forget to shut the key off, it'll burn that thing up sometimes, you know? And, and I think that's the reason why. Also, if it's not a good, like heavy gauge wire from there to the key to the battery, it, it seems like they can act up too. I bought a car one time where a guy put one on and every time you hit the brake lights, the car would die. Well, it was messing with that electronic ignition it was dropping the voltage low enough that the thing couldn't keep up. So, I don't know. I mean, well, I'll tell you, I have what I've got. Okay. Okay. I've well, had it for a long time. If I'm good at work, every time I step off, disconnect the battery. I disconnect the battery. And I do too. And then it's not a big deal because I tell people that all the time. I got shut offs in every one. And it just seems like if you do that, when you come back, you still got a battery, just like I shut the gas off too. You always have gas and, and battery if you shut them off and whatever when you leave. And I always, I always do this. Now that that won't be a good deal, but we'll get it. Make sure it's going to do what we want and then have some other problem. In there. You want me to start? Or you yeah, go ahead. See what see what we get, and we will uh, go from there because we'll have to we'll have to adjust the timing a little bit. I'm sure. Yep. Why is my choke blowing out? <laughs> huh. Probably because... There you know. it is. There it is. Must be stubborn. <laughs> okay. That gas is off. On, isn't it? I thought I turned it off. Also. It looks like it's on. Yep. Okay. 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 Ready? Yep. <laughs> Battery dead. <laughs> That's about the way it goes. I should have brought my little jump oh, I got a <laughs> box me. thing. I, I, for years, everybody said, you need a jump pack. And I held off and held off. And the other day I finally bought one and I've used it about every day on something. But yeah, it, it's, well, it's aggravating. That's that right when you need it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like this. Yep, I should have brought my jump pack. I didn't bring it along because I thought we'd be good to go. And could have could have showed it off and made a believer out of someone else on the Napa jump pack, but this thing ought to run. I don't see why it wouldn't. But I want to hear it run with the points before we put that in, because like I said, I personally am not a big fan of these. But to each his own. They do start instantly, but I think a lot of people's problem with it's kind of like this they have that original distributor and they want to try to fix its issues with one of those well that doesn't fix the issue the issue is the plate gets wore i don't know if we can look at that or not here i 
I think I've probably showed this before, but yeah, see this plate gets slop in it, and as it pulls around is what changes the timing, but it wants to tip up instead of just follow its course, and then that messes with it. I'll bring you back whenever we get this ready to go. He said it took three guys to put this thing out. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're just waiting for somebody to develop fuel injection for all of our There you go, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's, let's try it again. see what happens. I hope that one works. Shit, I just used it the other day. <laughs> Is it getting, see, so I never checked anything, but is it for sure getting good power to this coil? As far as I know. Okay. I might, to, I might have to, I might have to tweak it a little bit. We'll try uh, again? Yeah, try it again. Let's see. Because it acts like it ain't hitting a lick, so. We'll switch it out. You okay. Got one with you? Uh, I do have a coil with me, yes, but I want to make sure, uh, do you have a test light by chance? I do not. Okay, we can figure it out though. Let's, uh, let me take the cap off and we'll crank it over again. I want to make sure if it's, if it ain't sparking, then we got, we got trouble. But it should be very close in time to where it was, so it shouldn't, it should have started. All right, give her a crank over again. Let me, uh, you got the key on still? I get the key, yeah, it's on. Turn it on and let me see if I can. It's on. Okay, we are getting spark there. Shut it off again, let me. Sometimes the new points need sanded on before we start, and I don't know. Maybe that's my... <laughs> that's one thing they don't make like they used to, is the points. They just... I don't know. I've had that issue before where out of the box they... I wouldn't think that was... Maybe I should have just put that thing in right away, but I thought... We'd make sure it didn't have any other issues before we... <laughs> Not to that sure. trouble, but is there a pain putting that in? Like... No, it's just I gotta disassemble everything that's in this, and you know, so and then take your stud out and your wires go through, and then it's not really that difficult. But, but then, like, I wouldn't be able to tell whether it was getting sparked like that right. without pulling a plug because because you can't see anything on those. Let's try her again. Okay. 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 Hmm. Well, that's an old battery one. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> we're, we're eliminating things. I'm trying not to spend all your money at once, but I, I do what you have to do. That's the way it works. I figured. It didn't do any much good sitting there. No, that's true. I mean,. That's what I tell people too, they don't, parts are so much more expensive now, but if you don't have it, <laughs> what do you got? You got a big paperweight. Yeah, I mean. That's exactly what it so, is. So you got to, you know, I don't like spending money either, but finally it's like, well. That uh, gave me a chuckle. That, uh, he had a, what was that, an H or an M farm mall mm -hmm. that he took all the time on those parades and stuff, or tractor drives, and... Uh, some relative ended up with it. They brought it in there and I worked on it. It didn't run anymore and I got it running and did a bunch of work to it. Well then, a few months later, I see it in the paper that some high school girl had won a contest because she started a tractor restoration business and she fixed up this tractor. <laughs> and I was, I thought, man, you know, I ought to write in on that one because I know who did that, it was me. So that's fine. But yeah, I, I got a kick out of that. It, it was in the front page of the paper, and I thought, well, 
and uh, for a cow calf. And what he would do is he'd bring me a bull, ones that were young, he was trying them out. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I won't charge you nothing, you let me experiment. And I said, well, you experiment all you want. <laughs> and you know what he did, Rob? <laughs> I got, I'd raise them and get them past wing age, get them on grass, and they'd be four months old. Heck, he brought all the calves right back from me. <laughs> he brought all the calves right, right back from me. He used to tell me, he said, I have never seen a place that's got grass like your place. He said, I've never, cows just fatten right up here in calves. So he would buy, <laughs> he'd come back and buy the calves. <laughs> yeah, he, I don't remember, did he have cancer? What got him finally? I can't remember. He kind of, I knew he had a, he had a heart problem there. Remember that? I think that? it was kind of a surprise when he died, wasn't it? I, I think mean, it was. They didn't really. He did have a heart problem. He had a bypass surgery in, mm. several years before that, I think. And um, I saw him at the Missendick sale about when he was recovering, and mm -hmm. he, wasn't back, he wasn't quite back 100%, but he came to the sale. And then, and then after that, he came down one year or two years and, uh, and bailed Gary's field. Oh, really? Round bailed, okay. yeah. That's kind of a drive for you. Yeah, him. it was. Let's give her a try with that. All right. If that don't go, we'll go farther. All right. But you'll do it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I'm trying not to spend his money, but something ain't going here, and I don't trust all this stuff. I mean, we're obviously getting power through, but I know nothing about this coil. And he said he replaced it, but that doesn't mean that it's good because I've had coils from the store that didn't perform. And I brought one along that I know will work. So I'm gonna do that and make plug wires for it. And then by golly, it ought to run, which is the intent that I came with to start with, but I kind of was trying to save him on, you know, stuff he'd already bought, but sometimes that's not the way she goes. Okay, well, let's just get this out where we can work on it. We'll swap her out. Swap her out with a new one. With a good old IC14. Or you could use an IC14SB, but at any rate, that is an internally resisted coil. And that should do what we want. Oh, there's our trouble. Use with external resistor. Sure enough, that is not the right one. We might have already burned up our point. Yeah, really, if anything, I'm kind of confused because that should have started it and then burned up the points. But I don't think it burned up the points. I think it's just... But this is what you want it to say. No external resistor required. So, we got an E for effort, but unfortunately, that was a boo-boo. Also approving my long saying that you should have tested everything. I shouldn't have just, that was a mistake, assuming that it was correct. But we're still not out anything other than time because it will, uh, I've got enough stuff with me to make it go. One way or the other, it's gonna go. Oh, goodness. I should have brought my five-gallon bucket to sit on. We've got to hear this run. And we've got to take it back apart and put electronic ignition on it. And this is a good example of why I didn't do that right away. Because if I had, I wouldn't have been 100% sure where my trouble could be. I could have, I would have always been questioning whether it was that electronic deal. 
So that's why I like to do one operation at a time and so on and so forth. But she's gonna go, friends. She's gonna go. 7% battery. I'm probably gonna have to swap you out before too much longer. Cause you ain't gonna be with us anymore. Well, conditions are worsening. We can't get it to fire. I tried the igniter and it's missing the metal ring that goes to fire it. So that's useless. I'm gonna have to call them and find out what the deal is. So we're gonna try to put the points back in and make her go. We'll give this one more go. Right. If this don't work, then we'll use that. If that don't work, then I guess I'll have to come back and get that metal ring or that pickup ring. Where'd you get that? I ordered it off the internet from a place that I thought was reliable, but either they took it out of there or maybe they never got it in. Are going to tell me that they sell that separately, which they did not list because <laughs> in the picture on there, it was in there with it. But, but yeah, it's useless without that because that's the thing that tells it to fire. Sure. Because it's got a, you know, like six places on that, in that magnet somehow. And then it, no, I worked on a 1650 for a guy and it fought me and fought me with that electronic ignition. It was constantly a problem. And he actually had the Mallory distributor with the electronic ignition. And the way they made that plate in there it wasn't very good because it was what it was doing was it was it was like vibrating the, the bolts out mm -hmm. and stuff was happening and it wasn't getting ground all the time and then plus there were other issues on the tractor so it made it about impossible to to hone it down to what was happening and I finally I cut 10 acres of hay with it before I finally got it to mess up good enough that I could tell what was our problem you know so and it was what well after fixing the distributor his problem was in his fuel tank really and, he uh, had enough trash in there that if you'd use it for a long time, it would bounce and it would finally get it plugged up where it wouldn't come out. It would look like it was fine, but it wouldn't be coming out. And I couldn't figure it out. I run it up and down the road and never had a lick of trouble out of it. And after cutting almost 10 acres, hey, it finally messed up. And then I found where the well, trouble... Well, I can tell you something about this gas tank. The, uh, for lack of a better word, the sensor in the tank the little pickup thing you mean yes is broken okay and sometimes it'll cover the hole oh yeah see that see oh okay. you're like your fuel gauge you yeah mean. yeah yeah and it'll cover the hole but that shouldn't start keep it from starting yeah it, you know no because it i smell like now i smell it's getting gas we yeah. just aren't getting any fire and i I've never had that trouble. I just put one of these distributors in a tractor that sat 20 years and it fired up. So it's odd that today it wants to make me look stupid, I guess. Uh, these machines, I tell you. See now what we got. Ready? Yeah. Okay, we're, getting, we're doing better than we were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably way off on the timing. Too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I might, we might have to, I might have to move every wire around one time so that this tachometer cable isn't so. I tried to put it where it was, but it may be, we end up in a totally different spot. Okay, so we want me to start again? Try to start it. Let's try to keep it running and okay. we'll see what happens. <laughs> Man, almost. Take this cable off. That'll help me out too. And I can mess with the distributor first, and then we'll we'll put it together nice in a minute. Okay, go ahead. Ready? Yep. which will let me put the distributor back this way because okay. I think that's what we're going to want. I don't want your tachometer cable to be pointing forward when it's going backward, you know, type of thing. So, we'll just... 
slight flip flop here, and I think we'll, we'll get her. All right, try that. Okay, so try it again. If it turns over, I ought to be able to make it run. I haven't had one yet that I couldn't, but this one definitely fought us. I mean, that's odd that it didn't give us anything at all to start with. And then of course, the, that coil was the, wrong one. the coil was the wrong one, but it, what it should have done there is it should have started it right away and then run for a little bit and then burn it up. It shouldn't have, but unless these points just had too much like shipping stuff on them or something and I didn't have it quite clean enough because they put that Cosmoline on stuff and man, it doesn't let anything and it can fool you. I mean, we'll put this back in and hopefully your tachometer will work. Maybe if I can see where the little cutout is. I think it's pointing down. Come on. That's kind of a trick, yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah, there we go. Tighten that up and then you can try to start it again and make sure it's not gonna make a liar out of us. Go ahead. Oh yeah. I think you got her now. It is though, you can, I can tell that it's getting its power from that, uh, that solenoid because it's got a second yeah. delay and then as soon as you let, it's like when you let the key off it starts up, you know. It's weird how that, I, I don't know. Mine was really bad. Our, it was like you think it's not going to start and as soon as you let off the key then a second later it starts running and it's like, well, okay. So, but that's what it is. I mean, probably if we put that electronic thing in we probably should run a wire up to the key switch just so that it gets a good 12 volts the whole time because that that uh, like I said on that car that really played fool with me too because of that he had just wired it into the car's wiring harness well that didn't work I wired a heavy wire directly to it and then it would you could hit the brakes and still be going you know <laughs> Well, here we are on the return trip. I got to thinking, I hope that I videoed it when it was, the tractor was running, because I'm not entirely sure that I did. But uh, I hope so. Anyway, we'll be going back there again, because if you didn't guess, I ended up buying all his equipment that he wanted to sell. He has some really cool stuff that is now my stuff. <laughs> I took it as payment on this bill. Uh, a 3240 two bottom plow which is nice because I had a 3241 two and three bottom but no 3240 so got that uh, he had a couple walk behind plows a wooden beam and an iron beam he had a 26 high wheel drill on rubber which is hard to find some that have good rubber tires and this one seems to so that and then finally the thing that really got me excited and i'll have to look at the literature to see what the number is of it but there is a uh like a it was a three or four section harrow and he had the pull bar and everything and uh, it still had green paint on it in places and i thought that was super cool you just never see that so uh someday when it's dry enough that we can drive the tractor on the ground to load stuff we're gonna get out there and 
I'll take the trailer and we will make this happen but until then yeah it can just sit there it's all in the shed so that'll take care of that but we'll have a video going back to get it sometime you know and I'm gonna keep on heading home here out of the mountain so that's where we'll leave this one as always if you enjoy my videos give them a thumbs up leave a comment and tell me how dumb you think I am or if by some slim chance you liked it say that thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one